Friend and neighbour Liz Knight is the perfect person to go foraging with. Her expert knowledge gives her access to nature's larder of safe and delicious plants. Today, she's going to make me the perfect warming cup of tea. Now, even the most optimistic of people would say it's very, very early spring. Some might still call it winter. Um, but Liz Knight, forager extraordinaire, assures me that you can still forage at this time of year. And not only that, you can forage in her garden. Well, not you, but we can. There is no weather bad enough for you, really, is there? There is not when you want a cup of tea. <laughs> There's never any weather bad enough. <laughs> Actually, as far as cups of tea are concerned, I agree with you. So are you... That's nettles. It's nettles. Sting nettles, dead nettles. Yeah. Which are edible. So these slightly more they bright green ones. Can yeah, I... but they don't sting. You'll have all seen dead nettles. They're called dead because they don't sting and they usually have red, yellow or white flowers. And actually, funnily enough, just to confuse you, yeah. dead nettles aren't nettles at all. They're mints. So they're a mint family. They're really good at kind of a supportive kind of plant. So they're really worth sticking in. Now, is there a truth in um, the plants that come up at this time of year, like nettles, being particularly nutritious. I mean, nettle, stinging nettle in particular, is used, you know, all around the world as this amazing kind of rejuvenating, almost like a spring tonic, but lots of the plants which come up, cleavers, so are cleavers an amazing. So I call goose grass, goose but it's the stuff, really, the stuff that sticks to you. Yeah, you know, stick yeah, yeah. Out. But nettle, stinging nettles themselves are amazing because they're really good for your circulation, they're really good as an anti-inflammatory, and all the things that happen through the winter where if I'm feeling run down, this is what I need. Yeah. You know, and if I feel, you know, this is the kind of tea that we need to have. And not only has it got really good stuff in inflammation, and all of these plants are rich in vitamin C. With so much goodness in each leaf, we're going to make a hot, soothing cuppa out of the nettles, dead nettles and cleaver leaves we've collected. We do have, because it's tea and we're British, tea bags. Are you doing a homemade tea bag? Oh, maybe I'm doing homemade tea bags. These are little muslin tea bags. Yeah. Um, and so and this is just simply so that we don't end up by you know, kind of having to sieve it through it our teeth. Yeah. yeah. So there's cleavers. There's dead nettle going in, which will warm us up. The great thing about this is you can stuff each bag with as many nettles and cleaver leaves as you want, even add your own herbs, then just pop them in a mug and brew. One of the great ways of using nettles is by drying them out and grinding them up into a powder. And if you open that and have a little smell, it literally smells like spring, the mineraliness. Oh, of... wow. It's almost seaweedy. It's almost enough, seaweedy because nettle's really high in potassium. Yeah. So you can use it in those sort of similar seaweedy flavours. So it becomes very savoury. But if I wanted to make a nettle soup or something and I didn't have fresh nettles, I can stick those into like a leek and potato soup and I'm getting all the benefits of the nettles. And shall I tell you why you want to have nettles in your diet? It's because not only is it full of all that stuff, it's really good for your um, circulation and for inflammation. It's also one of the most complete foods that there are. It's got this amazing combination of everything that we need for healthy cell formation. So to dry them, do you hang them up or do you just li literally just leave them on newspaper? You can leave or... them on newspaper, you can put them in a really low oven. If your oven goes very low, to like oh, yeah, 50 yeah, degrees, yeah. some ovens nowadays go very low. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, you can hang them, but you want to dry them quite quickly so they okay. don't go kind of mouldy. Yeah. Do you just I mean, do it in a food processor? Just in a food processor. So nettles are massively more nutritious than spinach. So that is like the equivalent of Baskets and baskets of spinach in that little bit. The whole of the nettle plant is just phenomenal for us, you know, as well as kind of for wildlife. So are we properly brewed, do you think? I now? reckon we are, yeah. It's, it's actually quite a spinachy smell, isn't it? It is. Okay, I'm gonna try it because I need warming, believe me. Oh actually, that is quite delicious. Of course it is! <sighs> do you know what would be really nice though? Which I know is a little bit tricky to forage in a Welsh garden. <laughs> in February, is a squirt of lemon in there. Wouldn't it? Wouldn't that be nice? Yeah. And that would add your vitamin C, wouldn't it? It would, even more. Mm. Stick with me, Liz Knight. Culinary genius I am. Who'd have thought it? Nettles, delicious, free, and I'm going to show you how they're just as good in a springtime soup as they are in a cup.
Working outside with the pigs and other animals through the winter months can leave me chilled to the bone. So it's important to have a menu of recipes guaranteed to thaw out the coldest of extremities. Who doesn't love soup on a cold day? Butter, a little bit of oil. Just gonna let that melt down. This dish is another great result of the sting operation earlier, picking nettles with Liz. I call it spring in your step soup. Um, because, you know, days, well, days like today where it's a little bit gray and you're feeling a little bit kind of, and you want something to perk you up. This is a perk you up soup. Once the butter's melted, stick in a chopped onion and a finely sliced leek, then leave them on a medium heat to sweat for 10 minutes. Look how green that is. That is glorious. Roughly dice a large potato and de-stalk a handful of kale and throw them into the mix, then simmer for 15 minutes. Whilst you're waiting, it's time to tackle the nettles. You'll need about two cups worth. And if your hands aren't as farm hardened as mine, you might want to wear gloves. You want to get the stalks out because if you leave the stalks in the soup, which you can do, but you'll end up with this sort of slightly brown, sludgy, nothing spring and perky about it looking soup. Now, this is where you get your spring magic. I'm going to put in some spinach, just a really lovely, generous handful of those gorgeous green leaves, and our magic ingredient full of all that wonderful natural goodness. Let the leaves steep for no more than a minute, then simply blend. So we're not after smooth perfection here. We're just after emerald gloriousness with a bit of texture and chunk. Tell me that doesn't make you feel better just by looking at it. A bit of salt and pepper. I'm doing that because it makes me feel chefy. <laughs> and there you are. You can put it in a bowl and eat it with impunity. I'm ladle it out. I'm going to stick some croutons on. And the other thing that's really nice with it is a bit of hard cheese, like a parmesan, something kind of salty and delicious. And there we have it. Spring in your step soup. Time to give this dish's warming properties a proper test. It is actually freezing out here today, but the sun is shining. Well, I've got a bowl of warm green deliciousness. Oh.